Back up. Put the wheels this way so you clear the motor. That's, I want to roll the frame out from underneath. Oh, you, you want to do that? Okay. Well, we got to come up a little higher. A little higher than that, yep. And, and you got it's not, to not, chill. Now the tough thing is you got to let it down a little bit. And that's real hard to do that adjustment. I'm really going really slow. slow. Yep. Take your RPMs though. No, I want the RPMs. Off and put them up here. Okay, we got the body off the 49 here, so we're left with the bare chassis. 
Uh, I'm going to go over the chassis and talk about what we've done already to it and what's left to be done. Uh, starting with the rear. So I guess the first thing you'll notice is uh, it's got coilovers now. Originally this was a leaf spring in the rear. Uh, so what I did was created a nice cross member with upper mounts for the coilovers. Uh, that connects to the differential housing. This is a big beefy uh, Curry Enterprise Ford 9 inch. And that's connected to the suspension with these nice four link bracket bars. Four link bar brackets. Um, we made custom sets of four link bars and it's also got a diagonal link that's used to keep this differential centered. These are made out of chrome molly. Up here you go to the forward four link mounts. These have been put into a nice sturdy cross member. This is not stock, we created this. Something you'll notice about these cross members is I, I made uh, all the parts look like the stock chassis. You'll see the stock chassis here utilizes what's called a hat channel construction. So when I made my new cross members, I used a piece of large box tubing, but I also welded it to a flat portion to, to mimic the stock look. So when this is all welded in, obviously it'll look different, but it'll look somewhat stock, I guess. Uh, that comes to this uh, kind of intricate drive shaft loop. I liked the look of these spacers at the time. Everything I was building, I, I liked using these spacers. So it's got two um, removable rings, all put together with spacers. So if you want to drop the drive shaft out, you could just unbolt this bottom and take the drive shaft out. Moving up to the front, you see the uh, forward cross member here. Uh, also room for the drive shaft to come through and we've got the start of our transmission mounts. You can see again I utilize kind of this spacer look. I liked using that at the time. So what gonna, what's going to go in here is a removable transmission mount. It'll kind of sandwich in there. That's yet to be made. That's an upcoming project. Another thing to notice is everywhere that a cross member comes to the frame what I've done is I've used a nice piece of plate. So the cross member is welded to the plate, and then the plate is right here to the frame. So I have a large surface area for weld and double the thickness. So it won't want to pull this frame apart under huge amounts of stress. Okay, moving forward a little bit more, you'll see that we've already put in our nice hangers for our exhaust system. And we've modified these outriggers. This used to uh, come to a stock cross member that's since been removed. Obviously, we couldn't have it here uh, with this big transmission. So these outriggers have been modified to work in this current setup. And then the most obvious modification from stock is the front axle. We now have the gasser style front axle with leaf spring and straight axle. Whereas the stock assembly was a large cross member with coil springs and independent front suspension. Uh, so the upcoming projects are going to be the transmission mount, finishing that up. First thing we'll do is we'll make sure this engine's level before we establish where that goes. And we're also going to be working on the rear end. Uh, that's all for now. That'll, there will there'll be more.